Hello, I'm Chris Nikolai, the waterfowl scientist for Delta Waterfowl. We're going to talk about uh, bird communication today. So uh, it's two ways, two simple ways birds can communicate. One is visually, where they can just see each other. Um, examples of that are white butts on almost all the North American geese except one, where they can see each other during migration and on food sources, things like that. Second is vocally, make a lot of calls. Uh, you know, quack of a mallard, everyone knows, uh, honk of a Canada goose. But uh, they do those sounds for different reasons. And one here, we're going to look at an example of a tundra swan. And what they're doing is trying to tell all the other swans to stay out of my territory. You know, we got to have, they got to have a huge territory to raise their signets on for food. So they're like, okay, this is so big, I'm just going to yell really loud and all the neighbor swans are going to know I'm here versus something like a snow goose where they nest colonially. There's a nest every five feet, 10 feet in dense areas. They can see each other. They don't need to be that loud. So what we'll cover today is how normal birds aren't very loud versus birds like both swans and, and sandhill cranes are extremely loud. You can hear them over a mile away. So I already opened these birds up a little bit and we'll give you guys a, a little tour here and what we have is the breast meat removed from the central keel bone. You know, whenever you're breasting birds out, there's the same cuts you do. I just haven't pulled that out. And the neat thing here is look at how thin this is. I'll put a caliper on that one, and then I'll do a caliper on this one. So the top one's the swan, the bottom one's the goose. And look at that difference. And the reason that is, is the, esoph or the trachea that comes from a snow goose from its mouth along its esophagus comes up and goes right into the body cavity where lungs are and it's just a nice quiet sound these guys are so cool it's different and what happens is from the lungs it comes up into this bottom trachea comes up into this keel bone that's why it has to be so wide is for that that trachea to be able to curl through here and then it comes out through its mouth and what it does is makes a much longer distance for that sound to carry it's carrying that resonance um, and just make that really loud sound to broadcast to everybody, this is my territory, stay away. You can hear these when you're out hunting long before you see them. Sometimes these guys sneak up on you. Just trying to show everyone how some birds aren't so loud and some are really loud and completely conditional on how long their trachea is and whether it reverberates through here for how far away you can hear these birds.